Some of the stranded people have been here for three to four days. Many are poor. We have to sit here. I have no money. I'm on disability. While Greyhound has provided some food and room vouchers, many are sleeping on the cold tile floor of the station. It's not pretty. This place messed up. The bathroom's messed up. Some of the passengers say all they've had to eat in the last few days is a sandwich. As to when they can get out of Denver, no one seems to know. Okay, maybe 6.30, maybe tomorrow morning. Who knows when? In the crowd, this elderly woman is shaking as she leans on her luggage. You're almost ready to cry. Yeah, it's fun. Jerry Bell, News Radio 850, KOA. Stranded passenger Nate. Since Monday, um, they've not mopped the floors. It's covered with, uh, like, uh, salt and mud. Um, They expect people to sleep here. The doors get locked between 12 p.m. and 6 a.m., locking all these people in together. There's about four convicts that have just been released. You know, we got kids running around here. They're, the facilities are not being cleaned. There's people in the bathroom smoking crack, shooting up heroin. Just amazing stories coming out of downtown Denver and the Greyhound bus station. The supervisor snapped on me. I just asked her a question. I wanted to know, can I get a refund on my money or can I get some food or anything? And she snapped and walked away. You know, the babies in here crying, you know what I'm saying? They ain't even feeding them right. This place messed up. It's cold. It's cold out here. It's worse than a nightmare. This has been the most miserable last three days of my life. This is Colorado's Morning News on a Thursday. Glad you're with us and welcome online at 850koa.com. Jim or two is with the Mile High Chapter of the American Red Cross. Tough to hear those sound bites, Jim, and hear that people are suffering right here in downtown Denver because of weather elsewhere, isn't it? Yeah, it's hard to believe. I mean, obviously the blizzard uh, held up a lot of routes, uh, especially going to the Midwest, St. Louis, Chicago, Indianapolis, and uh, those people got stuck. So um, good for you guys for alerting us. Um, I think it was your own Jerry Bell who uh, tipped us off and uh, broke the story. So, yeah, Jerry, thank you. yeah, Jerry did a great job, but we don't want to pat ourselves on the back anymore. What the, the fact of the matter is, deplorable conditions, I think some would say. Yeah, I was down there last night. Uh, we went by and we dropped off uh, cots and blankets uh, to make sure that they weren't sleeping on the floor again. It, 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 was, uh, it was bad. I talked to a single mother with a 14-month-old kid, and she had been eating um, Ritz crackers for the last couple days and we made sure that she had a good meal yeah i think that was the same mom that was warming her baby's bottle of milk with the the hand warmer in the bathroom it's just unbelievable that this is happening before our our very eyes and what's more unbelievable to me as an outsider is that it took so long to find out about this problem why what have you heard from greyhound as to why they didn't ask for your help sooner well we don't actually know why we weren't alerted sooner usually this actually happens maybe once a winter uh, that their buses get stuck and people um, spend the night. And so usually they're pretty good about alerting us. Um, this time we found out from Jerry and not them. So we're going to follow up on that too and figure out what communication didn't happen um, and what we can do better in the future. I mean, I still can't get past the irony that it's right across the street from one of the nicest hotels in Colorado at the Ritz-Carlton. Jim, before we let you go, again, recap for us what's on tap for today. Well, we're going to go, uh, again, we dropped off cots and blankets. Uh, Greyhound said they were providing um, dinner last night and breakfast this morning. We're going to follow up. Obviously, you are not responsible for every single passenger there, but in any way, do you think Greyhound dropped the ball in Denver? No. In fact, we have been handing out food vouchers and warm meals since Monday. We had a small group of passengers. Uh, Monday was when the, the passengers started to become um staying at the station, and yesterday actually was when the majority of passengers were there. And we've been handing out food vouchers to use at our restaurant that's located on property there since Monday. We've also been handing out hot food. Um, We've also arranged with a local hotel for passengers to stay there as well for a very discounted rate. So we're accommodating people as best we possibly can. Bonnie, our reporter Jim is out there again at the bus depot and has a question for you. Go ahead, Jim. Hey, Bonnie, I hate to disagree, but I'm down here at the Greyhound station. I just talked to some people. They were lining up for food early in the morning when the restaurant opened up. They did Mm -hmm. not have vouchers. Can you explain that? Yes, we were handing out vouchers throughout the morning. We did not hand them out at first when the restaurant first opened because we wanted the restaurant to be able to come in and get set up. So we were handing them out throughout the morning to space out the passengers. One other question. One other question from downtown here at the Greyhound Station. Uh, Some of the people complained uh, over the fact that Greyhound continued to sell tickets even when they knew that the buses were not going to uh, get through. Why would that be? You know, I'm not sure. I, I, I don't know the answer to that, but I do know that our tickets are good for up to a year. So if they purchased a ticket today, they could use them at any time.
Greyhound is having trouble getting people around, and several dozen people are still stranded at the bus station in downtown Denver as we speak. That's where News Radio 850 KOA's Jim Hooley picks up the story. He joins us live. Jim, I hope it looks a little better than maybe it did this time 24 hours ago. Oh, yes, Devin. Things are starting to look up for the uh, 50 or so people that we have down here right now. Just a couple of minutes ago, Greyhound put out uh, the wake-up call to the people who have been stranded here. Many of them bunked down. They've been sleeping on cots and blankets supplied by the Red Cross overnight. And many of them can't believe what they've been through. It reminds me of um, like a hurricane or something that ripped through. It reminds me of an emergency shelter. It doesn't look like a bus depot to me. It looks more like an emergency shelter. That's pretty much what it's been here for the past 24 hours. Greyhound now says that it's going to be getting buses out later today to the Midwest, heading to Chicago and St. Louis, and that should happen in a couple of hours. But right now, there's no guarantee how far to the east those buses will be able to go. The people here still are at the mercy of Mother Nature and how fast that storm plowing through the east will move out.